got your suit on. All right, so in the time it took us to get suited up and over here, they've took off out of the tree and they are in the air. So Lane is actually chasing them across the field, beating on a, a metal sheet thing to try to get them to land somewhere. Ben and I are driving out there. They are taking off. I don't know how this is gonna work out. All right, so we've crossed the pond. Here they come right over my head. They're keeping on going. All right, well, we didn't catch them. Can't catch them all. Um, apparently, the scout bees have already been out scouting around, as you know. Um, we've talked about that before. When uh, they're gonna swarm, they'll pick out a place to go and then they'll come out of the hive and get congregated and ready to go. And you better be ready. They took off to the place they had picked out. They went over the pond. Um, we could never see them. We thought they might have landed at the edge of the pond, but could never find them. Looks like they took off over the pond into, that is a very heavily wooded area. It's unlikely we'd ever find them over in there. So gotta let this one go. All right, guys, so we didn't catch the swarm. But we are over here about to take honey off of these hives. We've got four shallow supers and two mediums. If you're not a beekeeper, like pretty much me, I'm a bee helper, but I wouldn't call myself a beekeeper. Um, I help the beekeeper, but the shallows are just what they sound like. They're more shallow, the mediums are a little bigger, and then there's what they call deep boxes, and those are even bigger. There's probably more than that. I don't know, but that's in beginner's terms. Um, so what we do is you have to use something to get those bees to come down out of that honey super Because you don't want to take the honey super off and take it to your house and it's full of bees So what we use is a product called honey bandit. This is from man lake. That is our favorite company for bee supplies uh, We've ordered from them for years. They just seem to have what we need and it's usually in stock It's really quick shipping uh, which helps us out because usually when we're ordering something we need it pretty quick but I I like this product because it has um, all food grade ingredients. It's really the most natural thing we have found to this date to push the bees down out of the honey super. So I'm curious for you beekeepers watching, what do y'all use? What's your favorite product to get those bees out of the super so you can harvest your honey? All right, so you can see this bottle has a little tip on it. What we actually do is take that and then on the bottom of this board, is felt and we um, squirt it around on there put that felt side down on the super just for a few minutes and it will push those bees out of there and you're ready to take that box of honey so what the plan is today is to take that honey take it to the house we have the garage shut and we have a little window unit going in there so we'll have a nice cool place to work we shut ourselves in the garage to keep bees from smelling the honey and coming over there to us we will harvest that honey so what we've always done is take the honey supers off go harvest it let the bees clean everything up everything i mean even the honey slinger they will clean it better than i could ever clean it then we will take those supers and bring them back over here and put them back on but we are always learning uh, and we we never try to portray it to you guys like we know everything because nobody knows everything and if they tell you they do they're lying or they're very arrogant but we've been told don't let the bees clean them up just put them directly back on just like they are when you're done so that's what we're going to try this time all right, it's been about five minutes. All the bees are cleared down. I'm gonna pull this one off. When I get it off, will you set it on this next box? Yep. So you say it's literally just a felt lined lid. All right, so the one Ben took off, you can see was the small one. It's, it's like this one, the size of this one. They call that a shallow. And then that is a little bit bigger. That's the medium super. How you feel after that run across the field? Hot. Hot? Yeah, Hot. it's warm out here, especially in bee suits, huh? That's Arkansas for you. How you doing? Warming up. Looking nice in that huh. dress shirt. I got one that's <laughs> yeah. really, she's mad. You got several that are mad. Oh yeah? Lane just spotted the queen. Here. Is it the queen of that yeah. hive? No, I'm not doing that. You got the pins in that? Nope. Do I have the pins? Yeah. Uh, I've got something like this. Is that them? She went straight through that. Exploded. Okay. Yeah. Is that the queen of that hive? Uh, that or maybe a new swarm queen. Right, because she was small enough she fit up. Exploded. All right. 
So this year's color is blue. They've got five colors for you to mark queens. That way you'll know if she was born in zero. Okay. Or five. So anyway, this year's color is blue. That way you kind of keep up with how old your queens are. Right. Well, she is right here. For all the people that aren't beekeepers. Right. Imagine. So this is a new queen. She so, won't sting, right? No. And we're going to do that. Well, got to get a little ink on there. Just a little. Just a little. Put a Aww, little. She's so cute. Put a little blue dot on her. You wondering this cage or not? You turning her back in there? I'm gonna try to turn her back in there. Thanks. So that means this hive is swarmed, and that's the new queen. Is that correct? Correct. But somehow she had got up because probably because she's a virgin queen, she fit up through the through the queen excluder, right? And was up in the honey super. And thankfully, Lane saw her. I was able to grab her. Good job, Bob. We got her marked. We got two on the truck now. Yep. Two down, four to go. Four to go, and if y'all was following us last year, you know the song, right? All right, so if you followed last year, he sang y'all a song, but I told him this year, he needs to sing and dance. Yeah, Are you so gonna give Jason a run for his money over at Cog Hill? <laughs> <laughs> I can't dance like that. Dance man. off. So last year when we was harvesting all this honey, song just kind of hit me, you know. You kind of get in a little groove of it. Start singing it. Okay, where's your dance moves, though? You got more than that? Uh, probably not. But okay. You got to kind of get in the groove. And they work hard for the honey. Hard for the honey. Oh, yeah. These bees, they work hard for the honey. <laughs> yeah, I did the little waggle dance. Like waggle baby. dance. Now, when a bee gets on a frame, it, it just shakes its butt around, you know. Just, Oh, I got a lot of jiggle there, too. You work hard for the honey, so you better treat them right. Is my lip bleeding? <laughs> okay. Look at that cool truck going by. He's carrying number three. Three to go. All right, we were going to take six of them, like I told you before, but we've decided to leave this last one. This one, uh, the queen evidently has gotten through the queen excluder, got up here and laid uh, in a lot of these frames. So a lot of them are half full of honey, half full of brood. And even a few queen cells in there from from where she laid up there and then this box looks like it's swarmed. So we're not going to bother this box since they've got queen cells up there. We're going to give it a lot better success rate on hatching queens. There was uh, three or four full cap frames of honey. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another super on here. Put a new queen excluder on here. Get rid of that queen excluder. It was either the queen excluder itself or the queen was so small she was able to fit through that. And if you don't know what a queen excluder is, it's just this right here. And it's the right size that a worker bee can fit through it. But a queen's abdomen is so so much bigger. Full of eggs. Yeah, she, her abdomen's so full of eggs that she can't fit through that. So that's what a queen excluder is. It's just wires that, but if one gets bent when you go to, to scraping the, the wax off of it like that right there, if one of them wires gets bent, she'll be able to fit through there. So in beginner terms, basically, you don't want your queen getting up into your honey super from the way I understand it because you don't want her laying eggs in uh, what you're hoping is going to be fresh, pure honey. You don't want eggs. You don't want baby bees and all that up in your honey. All right. We are in the garage. There is one big tip that I would give you for harvesting honey. It's going to be getting an airtight place like a garage or a building that you can harvest it. If not, you will be overcome with bees coming to the smell of the fresh honey. Another tip, a tub, and I've put, I've screwed a wooden bar on there just to stand the, the frame on to decap it. What I find best is just a serrated long bread knife works best. 
every once in a while you'll need a uh, this is a capping tool that you can just pluck out certain pieces of the cone you will want a bowl of water with a rag in it something to dry your hands on because you're gonna get sticky and then that right there is just a uh, honey slinger you put two frames down in it spin it and it spins all the honey out man they're stuck good they've got them glued in there tight so they put propolis in between like these wooden uh, frames they'll put it on the ends of them and glues them in there Ooh. but that right there is beautiful capped honey all right so this here's what you want the wooden board for just something to set it on run your serrated knife just right down the, the very end of the caps And this little tool right here is to get the ends of them. You just pull the caps off. Alright, this is all we do to our honey. This is straining it with a 400 micron filter. We do not filter, per se, push it through a filter and strain out all the pollen. We don't want that. We actually want pollen in our honey and that is what helps with your seasonal allergies. So if you've ever wondered why they say you want local honey because you want honey from flowers that is around your area that they make the nectar and also the pollen in there. And that's why you really want raw honey. All right, we are done harvesting honey. You can see the guys cleaning up the cappings behind me. Let me show you what we got. So we have got this whole five gallon bucket right behind Ben full. We've got this bucket half full and then uh, they are putting the cappings in another bucket. These buckets with the little spouts are awesome because once it drains down, you can just fill your jars from down there. Y'all tired? Yeah. yeah tired. <laughs> but look at the reward you get. Oh yeah. So Ben and Lane just finished harvesting honey. The plan actually was for Ben and I to do that together and the kids were going to kind of have the afternoon off but that didn't work out. So we have joked before about Emily being clumsy and me being clumsy but it's a true fact we're clumsy. I don't know if we've ever actually shared with you guys but Emily's had a lot of things happen over her young life. She actually broke her arm pretty severely when she was about five years old. Um, one of those bad breaks that when you see that happen like on TV or whatever, you know immediately what has happened. One of those types of breaks. And then 11 months later, she broke the other arm. And then we went a few years uh, pretty good. And in the midst of the second break, on the arm that was broken with the cast on it, she actually dislocated her pinky um, and then we went a few years we were pretty good and then at about nine years old she broke the original arm that she had broken she broke it again so she has broken her arm three times two of which were on mother's day afternoons and then we have been pretty good that has been several years ago in fact i was just thinking not too long ago how she's done really well for the past few years and we haven't broken anything and she actually told me today she said i just thought about that i haven't broken anything in a long time i said i know me too so yesterday afternoon this is actually monday memorial day so sunday afternoon she was playing on a slip and slide with some friends going down an incline going really fast and about halfway down she hit something with her thigh uh, right above her knee that was sticking out of the ground like a a rock or a little piece of concrete or something and really hurt her leg and she told me at the time she said, I think I might have just broke my leg. I actually wasn't out there when it happened, but she said when it hit, it hit her so hard and she was flying down a hill. She hit it so hard it stopped her and she just laid over on her back and thought, I just broke my leg. And on a slip and slide, there was soap on it, so it was very slick. So to have stopped her, that tells me how hard she hit. So we did the watch and see thing all afternoon yesterday. She couldn't hardly walk. It just got worse as the day went on. Swelled up super huge. Got really hard knot under the skin. Um, and Emily is a tough, 
cookie. She does not hardly ever cry. Uh, I cry more than she does. She just, she's just a tough girl. Um, she may look cute and sweet, and she is, but she's tough. And so, uh, by last night, she was crying, and I thought, oh, this is bad. This isn't good. So, we iced it and just... Uh, she took it easy and elevated it and all those things and then this morning we had mercy on her and did her chores for her um, and just tried to take it easy but by midday we were about to start harvesting honey I just knew we better get this checked out and so I told myself I'm gonna call urgent care and if they can x-ray it without me going to an ER I'm gonna take her and they said yep come on in so that's what we did we went and got it checked out I'm happy to report it isn't broken she just has um, some deep tissue injury uh, there's a tendon right above your knee that runs down though they showed it to me on x-ray under like in or under your knee it goes all the way from the top around your knee she's injured that she has some tendonitis issues going on there um, and the pain is radiating down her leg and that's why because she's she's got that tissue very inflamed she's got they called it a hematoma and blood clotting in that area which sounds terrible but it's not like she has a blood clot in an artery that's going to move around it's just basically going to take time she's going to have to keep compression on it to keep um make that swelling go down in that area and not just spread and bruise and all that so all that to say things change they don't always go like we're gonna think they are but i'm super thankful that she does not have a broken leg because those three other times i told you about when she was a little girl all three of those were in the late spring heading into summer she's wore a cast by the time she was nine years old three summers out of her life she'd been in a cast so um yeah that's pretty pretty terrible for a kid so thankfully she's good to go just gonna have to hobble around for a bit and uh, take care of it take it easy and thankfully we basically have four adults working on this farm so Lane was able to step in they got the honey harvested and we got her fixed up so that's that the boys are already back over at the bees putting the supers back on for the bees to be filling them up again we'll see you guys later thanks for watching God bless <laughs>